Hello. Yeah, I'm audible. Yeah, can you? Yeah, yeah, it's audible. Okay, and uh, uh, what if I want to share the slides? Yeah, you can uh, share the screen. There is an option, uh, sender. Share the screen. Uh, you have given me that rights, host. Yeah, yeah, we give you the rights. Uh, you should. How to share? In this, uh, sir, uh, in this sender oh, yes, button. I got it. Share screen. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. I'll just share screen. That's. Are you able to share sir, screen, sir? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just checking that. Okay, fine, fine. Can you just check if it is there? Can you see? Uh, no, actually, the screen is not shared yet. I have shared it. Share content. Okay. Uh, while sharing the screen, uh, there are many options. In that, yeah. you have to share the screen only. Yeah, it, the screen is shared now. Okay, it is shared, right? Yeah. You can go to the screen uh, presentation right now. Okay, so can you see the screen right now? Yeah, uh, can you open the presentation, sir? Yeah, this is the presentation. Okay, 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 sir, okay, sir. So, sir, uh, we have some uh, small introductory part. Can we start the session? Yeah. After, uh, uh, okay. Or, okay, fine. Okay, fine. Just a moment, sir. Uh, Dr. Nidisha? Yes, Dr. Vipin. Uh, you can start the session. Okay. A very warm good evening to one and all present here. I welcome you all on behalf of Excel Webinar Series Season 2. I would like to introduce... I would like to begin this session with a small prayer. Dear God, we come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help as we are gathered together. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. I would like to use this occasion to remember and thank our master, Dr. Hanneman, for his impeccable work and efforts in developing the art and science of homeopathy without which we wouldn't be here as doctors to serve the ailing humanity. Thank you, Master Dr. Henneman. A small disclaimer. This session is exclusively for understanding the theoretical concepts about drug addiction, and it won't include any homeopathic aspects. Any doubt regarding the same shall be asked towards the end of the session. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Dr. Vinodini to speak a few words about mental health since today is World Mental Awareness Day. Thank Dr. Vinodini. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nidisha. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Dr. Vinodini. As we all know that today is World Mental Health Day, I would like to share my views regarding the importance of staying mentally healthy. 
in india the awareness regarding the importance of mental health is very very less people actually think it is a ta taboo topic which is not to be spoken at all people are very reluctant to open up and speak about their mental state because they have the fear of being judged by others or they fear what if someone uses their problem as a target point they think that mind and body are different they never realize the fact that only if mental health is good everything else will be good there is a quote that there is no health without mental health mental health is nothing but being able to understand yourself what your needs are what your emotions are and so on so there are quite a few simple ways of being all right just tell yourself you are doing great you're good love and respect yourself and others confide in a good friend or consult a doctor whenever you are unable to unable to cope up with the situation relax and meditate every day even if it is for a very short while get involved in productive activities and support programs remember this is not a permanent state of mind so help yourself and others smile and spread positivity thank you so much thank you dr vinodini now i would like to introduce you all to dr rohan dr rohan is among few full time tobacco treatment specialists in india dr rohan has a bachelor's degree in homeopathy from cm patel homeopathic medical college in mumbai in 2005 and also mba in social entrepreneurship from narse monje institute of management studies in mumbai in 2012 He has more than 15 years of experience in medical field. He has vast experience of working in different hospitals of Mumbai like Godrej Memorial Hospital, Asian Heart Institute, Prince Ali Khan Hospital and Asian Cancer Institute. In past he has worked on one international collaboration project headed by senior oncologist Dr. Sultan Pradhan from Prince Ali Khan Hospital and Dr. Nancy who is pioneer of tobacco cessation clinic in Massachusetts General Hospital Boston US. Dr Nancy is professor of medicine in Harvard. He has counseled more than 5000 patients. Dr Rohan conducted tobacco de addiction camp in 16 traffic police stations in Navi Mumbai in collaboration with BY Patel Physiotherapy College. Dr Rohan has counseled around 250 traffic policemen in 16 traffic police states. His work has featured in newspaper Midday as first smoke nazi in city. Wherever there is smoke there is Dr Rohan. He was also introduced interviewed on tv9 news channel and channel win for tobacco awareness he has received rotary international vocational excellence award i invite to dr rohan to this seminar thank you you can share the screen dr rohan Hello, Dr. Rohan. Dr. Rohan, uh, uh, I think you are muted. Okay, okay. I know it's okay. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The screen. Okay. So, shall we start? Yeah, yeah. You can start the session. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, on. international world mental health day i would like to thank uh, ihma uh, kerala for inviting me for this topic and uh, as uh, it is being made very clear uh, in the beginning itself ki this session today is going to be on the basics of tobacco addiction we can have a separate session on how homeopathic management of tobacco addiction but what i personally feel after working uh, in this field for so many years uh, the basics of tobacco addiction are not known to people or not perceived properly uh, even in the medical fraternity there is a lot of misconceptions regarding this and uh, even uh, in general public the awareness is much less so uh, i just wanted to make uh, certain clarity and certain uh, scientific facts about tobacco addiction i was fortunate enough to work with uh, the best doctors in the city best cancer doctors and dr nancy who is considered to be a pioneer in this tobacco addiction field uh, she has been Uh, she started this tobacco clinic in us in like 40 years back and she is one of the uh, you can say uh, world renowned name in tobacco addiction field so i would like to share whatever i learned and all my experience so that it 
it would help you in your practice and helping uh, people to get out of this uh, tobacco addiction uh, as you know tobacco uh, uh, use in india but people don't know uh, from where tobacco comes most of the people are not aware because we just see tobacco in different forms but from where does tobacco come tobacco comes from tobacco farm these are tobacco shrubs basically these are tobacco farms and india is the second largest producer of tobacco in the world so you see there are a lot of farmers who are dependent on tobacco uh, crop it's considered to be a crash uh, cash crop there were uh, ministries uh, and there used to be an is officer to promote this particular cash crop in, in india so you can see there is a lot of uh, political and uh, in influence when it comes to making tobacco uh, laws and uh, restrictions regarding tobacco i mean there is a law called potpa law we won't get into the details of the law today but just trying to make you understand it there is a uh, huge population in india who depends upon tobacco farms and also on tobacco related industries like the bd making industry and the pan industry so this is something a little bit about the statistics uh, why there is a huge need for tobacco addiction in india because almost 35% of indian adult males use some or the other kind of tobacco products there was this gat survey done gat survey is global adult tobacco survey this is an international level survey it is done in almost uh, more than 22 countries across the globe india is also uh, india also does it the first survey was done in 2007 8 and it was repeated in 2016 17 i mean the results were very shocking in 2007 it almost 47% of indian adult males were consuming some or the other kind of tobacco products and the number still is very large if you see 275 million people in india are consuming some or the other kind of tobacco products and if you see uh, the number of people dying because of tobacco related illnesses it's almost more than 10 to 12 lakhs every year so this is more than deaths occurring because of hiv aids malaria and tuberculosis i'm talking about deaths actual deaths occurring because of hiv aids malaria and tuberculosis if you combine all these three diseases even death the deaths occurring because of tobacco and tobacco related illnesses is much more i won't go into details of the health effects of tobacco because you are all aware of it but still like to tell you certain uh, stats like uh, 90 to 95% of all oral cancers are tobacco related 40% of all other cancers are tobacco related recently who has come up with a uh, uh, results or statistics which says every fourth person suffering from cardiovascular illness in the world is tobacco related so that huge is the impact of this particular tobacco which is considered to be the mildest or a secondary addiction people don't even consider tobacco as an addiction because it is so common in our society every we see everywhere people either smoking or chewing uh, different kinds of tobacco products but if you uh, see certain somebody consuming drugs or alcohol we might feel something different but tobacco is well accepted in our society so that fight against this becomes more difficult and if we consider uh, the clinical aspect of it it is one of the biggest obstacle to cure when you are curing a person when you are treating a person if he is consuming tobacco it is one of the biggest obstacles to cure because no matter the best remedy or the best medicine is select if he is consuming tobacco it will still affect your treatment so we start our session today uh, just to understand uh, what are the different tobacco products i will just briefly touch into this topic because uh, we ourselves first of all should be aware of different tobacco products otherwise what will happen is we might miss a patient if we are not aware of different tobacco products you might ask in your history taking that do you consume any kind of tobacco for them tobacco must be on the cigarette or bd or i uh, chewing tobacco like tobacco with uh, celic lime or chuna what they eat but there are different other forms of tobacco which they may be having and they might not tell you or you might not be aware even that product or that particular thing is also tobacco so for us it is very clear we should first of all ourselves know what are the different tobacco products at least most common tobacco products available in our vicinity or our uh, patients group which we are practicing with what are the pro prominent tobacco products in that area that we should be aware of uh, tobacco products can be divided into two major parts like smoking and smokeless tobacco product part so if we consider smoking it is uh, the most common form is cigarettes bds and hookahs so if you see cigarettes cigarettes everyone is aware of cigarettes but a little uh, misconceptions about cigarette is this cigarette making companies promote cigarettes like gold flake light 
now this there is nothing light in this particular wolf like light it is just a marketing gimmick and it is just to fool people you should be very clear ki even if this cigarette is been promoted at different uh, way like low tar cigarette or lady cigarette or slim cigarette every uh, cigarette is equally dangerous and for that matter make certain points very clear like no matter which tobacco product it is it is going to be harmful no matter what quantity you are consuming it it is going to be harmful and no matter uh, what duration you are consuming it like you are consumed it for one year two year three year even then it it could be dangerous so these things have, should be made very clear with the patients uh, while counseling them second is bds bds are very common in india uh, with cigarette what happens is cigarette is uh, actually comes under uh, government taxation so every year government increases the taxation on cigarettes so the cost of cigarette goes on the rising every year so uh, uh, but bd is not bd is a very unorganized sector they don't come under tax revenue so cost of bd is very less so it is uh, consumed more in india it is easily available also that is another thing it is cheap and it is easily available so the consumption of bd is much more than cigarettes again a lot of people have misconceptions like cigarette has a filter bd doesn't have a filter so cigarette is less dangerous than a bd but again as i said there is nothing like that which uh, wherever there is tobacco it is going to be harmful either it is a cigarette or it is a bd both are equally dangerous and both will uh, affect the body third is hookah now this hookah i am not uh, aware how common is it in, in your area but hookah uh, what had happened is uh, three to four years back supreme court had uh, released the restrictions on hookah parlors and the hookah parlors started again but the reason to take off the law uh, the ban on hookah are totally different that doesn't mean hookahs are safe in fact uh, i would like to uh, make very clear that hookahs are more dangerous than cigarettes hookahs are four times more dangerous than cigarettes there are a lot of research studies available uh, which says ki hookahs are more dangerous uh, simple things like uh, a cigarette uh, last for like five minutes you cannot have a same cigarette for a entire day but hookahs are like sessions hookah sessions last for like half an hour to minimum 40 minutes and to an hour so the exposure is more secondly cigarette we don't take deep inside hookah we tend to take deep inside or breathe deep inside thirdly uh, even if this uh, hookahs uh, claim that they are flavored hookahs no matter how many flavors are there but if you see the content in that particular flavor they will be mentioned over there like nicotine content so and so so definitely there is no hookah which is without tobacco and which is without nicotine no matter what is the quantity of nicotine it will still be harmful to your body another thing is like even if they claim that it is this without tobacco or without nicotine but even if you are taking carbon monoxide gas carbon monoxide gas is the same gas which hitler used to use for as a poisonous gas uh, to the prisoners and uh, more important than that there is something called as interstitial lung disease now this interstitial lung disease uh, what happens is your lungs are an elastic uh, organ but this elasticity is lost and it becomes fibrous it becomes uh, uh, like a stone and one of the major reason for this interstitial lung disease is cigarette smoking bd smoking and hookah smoking i have personally seen patients with hookah smoking coming up with interstitial lung disease so it is to be made very clear with the uh, people who are consuming hookah that it is not at all safe it is not at all uh, less dangerous it is equally in fact more dangerous uh, than cigarettes there are other forms like cheroots and cigars but uh, this cheroots are nothing but uh, tobacco is wrapped in the tobacco leaf itself it is like a smaller version of a cigar you could say but this is more available uh, uh, common in rural area there are other smoke uh, smokeless uh, tobacco products just now we saw was a smoking product but there are other products which are there which they are called as a uh, smokeless tobacco products in smoking one more product which is coming up which we have not covered is e cigarette e cigarette is nothing but it is like a pen where there is a liquid form of tobacco where there are batteries and you could actually see the light because of the batteries and the smoke comes out it is wrongly called as electronic cigarette or e cigarette it is nothing but a drug dispensing device i repeat it's a drug dispensing device it is not an e cigarette it is wrongly called as an electronic cigarette or e cigarette they are available in different forms they are available in the form of e cigarette juice or vapes these are again becoming very common uh, fortunately in india fda fda has not yet approved it but still people buy it online from abroad or import it and there are something called as e hookahs which are locally also available so you should also be aware of this particular e cigarettes and uh, their dangerous uh, effects on the body who has not yet approved any of the e cigarettes and uh, they also have lot of uh, dangerous chemicals present into it which affects the body 
one more point i missed was uh, when a person smokes a single cigarette latest who protocol says that when a person is smoking a single cigarette he the person is exposed to almost 4000 to 7000 chemicals i repeat it 4000 to 7000 chemicals out of this 4000 to 7000 chemicals 200 are poisonous and uh, 60 to 65 chemicals are proven carcinogenic proven carcinogenic means they have capacity to produce cancer so if a person is smoking day in day out it is bound that the chemicals are going to in your body and are going to affect your body there is no rocket science into it all these points should be clearly mentioned to the person when you are counseling them because these are the points which will make the uh, lay person understand the uh, what you the severity of the uh, smoking or severity of consuming different tobacco products if you consider smoking tobacco uh, smokeless tobacco products there are different names and all but just for your understanding you just uh, understand wherever there is tobacco it is going to be harmful unfortunately in our country when you go from one state to another the packing will change the packaging will change the brand name will change the method of consumption will change so no matter what are the different tobacco products uh, as i said wherever there is tobacco it is going to be harmful so whenever you come across any of these such products which are uh, common in your, in your area you should immediately uh, counsel the patient for tobacco addiction So there is something called as gutka uh, mawa and uh, pan what is we have this pan the gutka again uh, certain states in india like maharashtra has banned gutka but still it is available uh, uh, i mean it is smuggled from other states and it is still available the price has increased because of the ban there is something called as mawa which is uh, nothing but uh, ingredients of this tobacco and all are placed on a uh, plastic paper and the rolled and these rolls are kept and the consumption is made directly into the mouth pan again the betel nut uh, betel leaf and uh, this ingredients of tobacco and other things are present in this uh, particular thing called pan it is again prevalent of all across india so these are certain tobacco products which i was talking about but there are other tobacco products like tobacco toothpaste now you should also be aware of tobacco toothpaste which is uh, actual uh, tobacco toothpaste like a sofa cigarette toothpaste by the brand name of ipco and uh, dentopack Ipco and Dentopack are two sophisticated tobacco toothpaste. I have seen uh, rich families after breakfast using this particular tobacco toothpaste. So this is another form of uh, tobacco. There is another form of tobacco called as Mashiri, which is common in uh, rural areas of Maharashtra, where the tobacco is burned and powder is prepared and it is being uh, applied on the gums. There is another form of tobacco which is a fine tobacco powder which is snuffed through the nose. It is called as Chikni Tapir or uh, Naswar. in local uh, languages but again this is a uh, tobacco form which is snuffed through the nose so you see there are so many tobacco different uh, products available in india that is the reason uh, the oral cancers or there uh, are maximum in india we are number one in oral cancers across the world because the consumption of tobacco is more and there are so many tobacco products available in india which are not available abroad because there there are more of smoking tobacco products so basically uh, why do people uh, start this particular habit i mean this is something very important because in spite of knowing that uh, tobacco is harmful in spite of knowing uh, government is doing lot of efforts to see why uh, matlab to promote tobacco causes cancer and other illnesses but still people get into this because there are a lot of environmental internal and external factors uh, affecting this so when you say environmental factors these are basically tobacco environment like uh, exposure to tobacco marketing this tobacco lobby has uh, does lot of research on marketing and puts lot of money to market this product we have a law in india called as scotpa law which uh, prohibits the tobacco companies to directly promote the tobacco product so what they do is they do pseudo marketing you will see priyanka chopra coming up with a baba elaichi ad or you will see akshay kumar coming up with some pan masala ad or ajay devgan coming up with some pan masala ad now the thing is the same uh, pan masala company will have a tobacco product but they won't they are not allowed to promote that tobacco product so they come up with this pseudo tobacco product like pan masalas and uh, other uh, products which are uh, not tobacco product but the same companies have a tobacco product so continuously people are exposed to all these things and that is uh, called as a tobacco environment again the access access is a easy access to certain thing there are high chances of people going to get into it 
and the image of tobacco uh, it is shown like a macho image of a person a hero in the movies a lot of south indian movies also show actors smoking with the and the macho image has been created so people want to be like them so they also start doing this this is a fact a lot of people have actually uh, ex- matlab uh, accepted the fact that we saw the movie stars and we started doing uh, smoking again price is a factor these are easily available cheap they are available if you consider the cigarettes are price is going on increasing but other tobacco products in india are very cheap other community norms like adult smoking rate we just saw the percentage of people smoking in india if you see so many people around you smoking you feel smoking is a norm it is a normal thing so the uh, the community norms also influence the people in starting this particular things there are certain external factors what do you mean by external factors our family influence and other psychological influences family influence means parental uh smoking habits or sibling if you are if the parents in the family are into the habits of smoking or consumption there are high chances that children will look up to them and start into it they would see ki uh, if even if government is saying uh, it is harmful but if my parents are doing it if my siblings are doing it it may not be that harmful or psychological influences like peer pressure and uh, sense of alienation peer pressure has come out to be a big cause uh, of uh, smoking in girls which has increased recent in, in recent years we have done the research where it came, it came up with girls uh, smoking has increased uh, because of lot of girls uh, face this peer pressure and sense of alienation of, uh, occurs mostly in uh, corporate offices where they want to be a part of a meeting or where they want to be a part of a discussion so they don't avoid this uh, smoke smoke breaks or you know that kind of uh, uh, you can say meetings where they actually go just to have a smoke or just to have a tobacco product so sense of alienation also uh, that is how they start uh, uh, this particular habit internal factors are basically your own uh, personal beliefs and values a uh, lot of people feel ki we should try all the things in the world once so that is a personal belief curiosity experiment all the things so these are certain personal beliefs these are internal factors what uh, affects and people start uh, people try for the first time uh, there are other factors like genetic factors genetic research studies have been shown that people uh, i mean the parents who who is to smoke their chances of their children going getting into the habit is uh, much more these are already research studies available for this so peer pressure family pressure social media experimentation to fit in or stress these are the most common reasons why people uh, initiate this particular habit how do you define tobacco addiction so before getting into tobacco addiction or defining tobacco addiction i would try to uh, tell you about something basic addiction why do people uh, get into addiction there are four major reasons for that this i am talking about generally about addictions dr anand adkarni who is a senior psychiatrist in mumbai uh, explains these four reasons because of which people get into addiction the first reason is the chemicals the characteristics of the chemicals present in this particular drugs or particular products like in tobacco there is something called as nicotine now this nicotine the characteristic of nicotine itself that it is addictive in nature alcohol has something narcotic drugs have something which which are the characteristic of the chemicals they are addictive in nature means they go to your brain they create some receptor level changes and these receptors keep on demanding for more and more nicotine so this is the characteristic of that particular chemical like gold has some characteristic silver has some characteristic this particular uh, nicotine Uh, has some characteristic because of which it is addictive in nature second thing is person's personality if your personality is strong you won't get into wrong things or you can uh, say no to wrong things so personality plays a major role while people get into addiction i can give an example of this i do a lot of uh, studies with uh, police people over here i have done a research study with uh, uh, 250 traffic policemen it was my personal belief ki it is a traffic police duty a 12 hours duty stressful job so 90% of them must be consuming tobacco but to my surprise only 33% of them were consuming uh, tobacco products so it uh, it is not only about uh, the, uh, the chemicals which are present but also the personality matters a lot third thing is friend and family support friend and family support is very very important uh, i can give an example of this again uh, there was an uh, case study where this vietnam war happened lot of american soldiers were into vietnam and this war was not much of a actual war this was much of a cold war so these american soldiers were provided with lot of uh, drugs and everything but when this war got over the american soldiers came back to their families 90 to 95% of them were off all the drugs 
Now, if you feel chemicals are the only reason, or the characteristic of the chemical is the only reason for drug addiction, then if these people came back, even then they should have continued with it. But when they came back with the friends and family, the environment was different, and most of them stopped taking drugs. Similarly, when people get admitted to ICUs and all, a lot of morphines and other uh, drugs are being given. So that doesn't mean when you come out, you start taking or continue those morphines. So friend and family support is very important. And fourth thing is stressful conditions. It is often seen that the people working in uh, high stress, uh, full jobs or conditions, the chances of them getting into these uh, addictions is much more. So I repeat the four uh, uh, reasons for getting into addiction. First is the characteristic of those chemicals present in these particular drugs. Second is person's personality. Third is uh, your friend and family support. And fourth is the uh, stressful conditions of uh, which the person is exposed to. So apart from this, what is so unique about tobacco addiction? So tobacco addiction, it is easy for me to tell a person that you should stop smoking or you should stop taking tobacco. It is affecting your health or it may cause you severe complications like uh, cancers and other heart ailments. But it is very difficult for that person to quit. The reason being is this tobacco is, uh, it is a physical, psychological and behavioral kind of addiction. It is a triple kind of addiction. It is a physical addiction. It is a psychological addiction and it is a behavioral addiction. Uh, do you... Dr. Rohan. Yes, yes. Hello. Yeah, can you... I think, uh, which slide uh, right now you are? Physical addiction. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, now it is changing. Actually, the slide was not changing. Yeah. Okay, okay I did it fast okay. actually. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go. You so can up, till go. Now, okay. up till now it's clear, right? Yeah, it is clear. We, we, will, okay. we will check the doubts at the end of the session. Thank you. Great. Great. So, uh, this, what is so unique about tobacco addiction? Tobacco addiction is a three type of addiction. It is a physical addiction, it is a psychological addiction, and it is a behavioral addiction. We'll see this each of these uh, types in detail. So, what do you mean by physical addiction? The word physical addiction itself suggests that there is a physical level change in the body. So, as I said, when a person smokes a single cigarette, he is actually consuming four to 7,000 chemicals. Out of which 200 are dangerous, 60 to 65 are uh, uh, carcinogenic. But the main culprit or the main reason for addiction is a chemical called as nicotine. Now, this nicotine is the main uh, reason of addiction because it is the most addictive substance found in the world. This nicotine uh, goes into your brain and creates some receptor level changes in your brain. So these are actual physical level, receptor level changes in your brain, which can be seen in, your, in the scans where these receptors are present and they demand for more and more nicotine. When this nicotine reaches these receptors, dopamine is released and that is why we get its feel-good factor. Dopamine is released, dopamine is a feel-good hormone. So dopamine is released when this nicotine reaches these receptors. So that is why this is called as physical addiction because there are actual physical level changes in your body which keep on demanding for more and more nicotine. So what happens is when this uh, nicotine uh, reaches the brain, dopamine is released. But uh, when this uh, uh, person uh, gets an urge to smoke, he will smoke, the nicotine will uh, reach this brain. So the time interval for the nicotine to reach the brain is different for smoking and smokeless tobacco. For the smoker, when he smokes, the nicotine reaches the brain within like 10 to 12 seconds. Because the pathway is very short, like it is inhaled in the lungs, the gaseous action happens and within the immediately it reaches the brain. But for a smokeless tobacco, it starts like uh, if, if you keep your mouth, the absorption happens immediately because the mouth circulation is very strong. But it goes into the blood and then it goes to the stomach, then into the blood and then it goes to the uh, brain. So the time interval for a smoking and smokeless is different. It takes more than half an hour for a smokeless tobacco nicotine to reach the brain. That is why what people do is they keep on uh, increasing the quantity of smokeless tobacco in their mouth. So this uh, time interval is very important when we select the uh, nicotine replacement therapy. So these are the nicotine receptors in the brain uh, which was uh, which are present. And if you see the second image, the nicotine receptors are disappeared because uh, the person uh, has stopped smoking. So what happens is, uh, when you stop smoking, there are some good changes or repair happening the, in the body. 
so when there is a proper research study available by who which says that within uh, 20 minutes of smoking stopping smoking or to 15 years of uh, stopping smoking they have actually documented the data what happens what are the good changes happening in your body this is very important to tell the patient because what the patient will see is that i have been smoking for like 5 years 10 years and i have already consumed so much chemicals in my body so my body is already affected so there is no use of quitting but the thing is this uh, we should uh, this is important point we should tell the patient is once you stop smoking or or stop consuming tobacco product there are a lot of good changes happening in your body just to give an example of smoking which has been documented by who within 20 minutes of stopping smoking your pulse rate and your blood pressure drops to normal within 12 hours your carbon monoxide level drops to normal within 2 to 12 weeks your lung function test drops to normal within 6 uh, months your chest congestion and cough goes away within 5 to 10 years you are uh, risk to heart attack or stroke paralysis drops by 50% within 15 years you are as good as a non smoker means a person who has never smoked and a person who has uh, stopped smoking 15 years back they are at the same level to get any cardiovascular disease or risk to any cardiovascular ailment so that is the level which body does repair so this is a very important point we should uh, which, which should be explained to the person to the patient because it will motivate him to quit because the earlier they quit the earlier these good changes will happen in the body so how to understand that uh, the person who has come to you is into physical addiction so there is a scale available called as fagostrom scale these are certain set of questions like how soon after waking up you are smoking your first cigarette why this question is important because when a person is having a smoking habit and he is uh, sleeping for like 6 to 8 hours the brain would be deprived of nicotine the first thing in the morning what will happen is his brain will demand for nicotine so the time interval is very important there are people who would wake up in the morning and within 5 minutes they will have their first cigarette so that itself shows the dependence of nicotine is very high and they are highly physically dependent and they are having physical addiction second is the number of cigarettes what they are smoking and there are certain other questions also but these two major questions are what is the time interval when you wake up in the morning and uh, what is the time interval when you smoke and second is the number of cigarettes you are smoking so uh, this will help you to understand whether the person who has come to you he is into physical addiction or no second is the psychological addiction the word psychological addiction itself says that there is a strong psychological association between uh, the tobacco product and the person just to give an example some people will tell you that they should they need uh, to smoke or they need to have some tobacco product to have smooth bowel movements uh, we all are aware that there is no uh, correlation between smooth bowel movements and uh, tobacco product because a person who starts a smoking uh, starts a consumption of tobacco product uh, must have started it at the age of like 15 16 18 or something so first 15 years he was having uh, bowel movements smooth bowel movements without a tobacco product second thing Uh, if he has uh, any other stimulant like hot water or like uh, hot tea or something in the morning instead of uh, tobacco product he will still have the same gastrocolic reflex and that because of that he will have the peristaltic movement and he will have a smooth bowel movement third thing if he has good uh, fibrous food in the diet that will help for stool formation and he will have a smooth bowel movement fourth thing uh, i mean of course when people go to doctors doctor never recommends him that have three cigarettes and all so tobacco cannot be taken as a medicine so uh, what this uh, this psychological uh, association what a person has developed this has to be broken by like this explaining to the patient each and every point scientifically explaining them the whatever you are thinking or whatever strong psychological association you have developed is not the right thing this tobacco has no relation with the smooth bowel movement so unless and unless i explain them with uh, like this uh, by telling them the scientific things they will still continue in, in spite of getting the best medicine or the best treatment because of the strong psychological association they will still continue to have this tobacco product similarly lot of uh, people feel ki stressful uh, if they are into stress they need to have a tobacco product or if they are doing some creative work they need to uh, have they need to smoke or they need to have a tobacco product so again this is something which is uh, a strong psychological association which they have developed with the, this particular tobacco product these are other other examples like stress happiness they may never they are sad or when they are angry they have developed a uh, habit or they have developed a psychological association that they should have a tobacco product now the another the third one is the behavioral addiction 
the word behavior itself uh, suggests that over a period of time it becomes a part of of your behavior it can be uh, segregated into time place person and thing there will be uh, patients who would tell you that i don't normally smoke but when i go to this uh, at this particular time i in the evening i need to smoke or place i don't normally smoke but if i go to this place this club or wherever i only then i smoke or have a tobacco product person normally i don't smoke but only when i with this friends or uh, this group i uh, smoke and thing uh, with like alcohol i need a, i need to smoke or after dinner or lunch i need to have a tobacco product so these are certain things which people do involuntarily because part of their behavior doing it repeatedly now this behavioral addiction is totally different from a physical addiction because yet they are not developed that strong receptors so they are able to manage it by doing it once in a while but there are high chances that this uh, behavioral addiction will convert into physical addiction because the receptors in the brain go on increasing over a period of time so uh, most of the time there it is a combination of physical psychological and behavioral addiction but you also might get patients who are into uh, only into behavioral addiction or only into behavioral and psychological addiction so uh, your strategy for treatment will change accordingly so that is the reason you first you need to understand what is the uh, what is the exact addiction or what is the exact uh, type of addiction which the person has come to you even if it is into a tobacco addiction what is the exact addiction which the person has come to you with so why is it so hard to quit tobacco habit is because it's not just a single addiction it's a physical psychological and behavioral addiction so person has to work on work on all these three levels so that we are able to help them to quit i'm not going to details uh, because we have uh, very less time but uh, another thing is very important that we should consider in uh, addiction is uh, this particular state of mind the different the stages of mind uh, this is a psychological theory it is uh, not only related to tobacco it is a general theory which we call as pre contemplation stage stage this is a stages of change model how do people change the first is a pre contemplation stage then comes a contemplation then preparation then action and then maintenance or relapse as i said this is not only for a tobacco addiction specifically it is in general even for a obese person you can relate uh, this particular theory i would just explain to you uh, in short if you if you find a fat person or a obese person and if you tell him that you are fat you are obese uh, it is a high time that you should uh, join a gym otherwise you will face severe uh, consequences like you might have some heart ailment but a fat person will say you know i am i don't feel i am fat i don't feel i am obese so he is still in that particular stage called as pre contemplation stage they have not even thought about it or they don't even accept it that they are fat similar thing happens with a smoker when you tell a smoker the smoker says i am comfortable to with smoking i don't think uh, i should stop it and i i don't think it is affecting my body in any way so this particular stage of mind is called as pre contemplation stage second stage is the contemplation stage so what happens in this contemplation stage they start thinking uh, okay people are saying doctors are saying so maybe i am fat or maybe uh, what i am smoking is a uh, it's not good for my health so they are they at least start thinking about it till they have they have not uh, done anything about it but they are just thinking about it ki maybe i am fat or maybe i am uh, smoking and it is affecting my body the third stage is something called as preparation now what happens in this preparation stage in this preparation stage the fat person actually uh, pays the membership of a gym he is not yet started going to the gym but he at least makes a decision and pays the membership of the gym similarly a smoker how would you differentiate a smoker gives you a uh, quit date from this particular day i will stop uh, smoking so he has given you a quit date he is not yet stop smoking but he has prepared his mind to stop so that means called as a preparation stage then comes the action stage what will happen in the action stage the fat person will start going to the gym he has taken the action to uh, lose his weight what will the smoker do smoker has actually stopped smoking completely and he has taken the action and stuck to the quit date and he has taken the action of quitting smoking habit now after this stage action stage there there are chances of maintenance stage or relapse what will happen is a fat person may continue going to the gym or he will go to gym for like 8 uh, uh, to 15 days and then he might stop going to it a smoker may continue to uh, quit smoking for like some time and again there are chances that he might go into a relapse to start the smoking habit again 
So what happened after action stage is the maintenance or relapse stage. Now this is completely similar. I mean, it's a very generalized theory, but it is important uh, for us because when a person, a smoker or a tobacco uh, consumer comes to you, he might be in one of these stages. So when he is in one of these stages, the strategy again would change for every stage. You cannot have a, have the same strategy uh, for a person who is into a pre-contemplation stage and a person who is already into the action stage. If the person is into a pre-contemplation stage, max to max, what we can do is we can tell him the consequences uh, about how it, the smoking is affecting his health. We can tell him the, how the smoking is affecting him, not only on his health, but also economically how it is affecting, socially how it is affecting, how entire family would be affected if he uh, suffers from some disease. But that is it. We cannot give him a strategy how to quit cigarette because yet he has not thought about quitting. What we can tell him is that whenever you think of quitting, this is my number. This is the place where we uh, see tobacco uh, patients, and we will we are we will be definitely uh, helping you to quit. This is for a pre-contemplation stage. For a contemplation stage, you should already uh, convince him to set a quit date and get him into a preparation stage and give him a strategy. That uh, we will see the strategies in uh, the next slides. But then this strategy would, would differ from uh, uh, the stage in which the person is coming uh, to you. So basically, uh, uh, WHO, World Health Organization, has come up with a beautiful uh, strategy to handle this tobacco addiction patient. This is a straightforward strategy. Uh, they have done a lot of research and they have uh, imbibed different counseling uh, theories into it. A lot of uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and other therapies are involved and they have created a framework which is very simple to implement. Believe me, when I started practicing into tobacco addiction, I stuck to this particular uh, model and uh, over a period of time, I became expert in implementing this particular model and the success rate went on increasing and it was it went on becoming uh, more uh, effective. My success rate was between uh, 57 to 67 uh, percent of after doing six months of follow up. So if you follow this particular model, which WHO has designed after doing a lot of research, uh, this success, the chances of the uh, success will definitely increase. This is a very simple model. You might feel it's a basic model, but just I'll run you through it very quickly without wasting much time. But again, as I said, it looks very simple, but if you stick to it uh, religiously, your uh, results would definitely uh, increase. So what is this FI model? The FI model is nothing but, this is acronym by A and the FI is, the first A is ask about the tobacco use. So this is nothing but when a person comes to you, no matter what condition he has come to you, what complaint he has come to you, you have to ask each and every patient about the tobacco habit and all the other aspects of tobacco, like since what are the what are the tobacco products, what is the number of time he is consuming, you should have a phagostrom scale done so that to understand what is the, either he is a physical, psychological or behaviorally addicted. So basically this first is nothing but ask and ask about the tobacco and tobacco pattern and everything. Now, once you ask the person, the next day is advice. Advice is uh, uh, advise him to quit. This advice thing is very important because your advice should be very clear and very personalized. What do you mean by very clear? Very clear in the sense uh, when you are telling the person to quit, the person should feel the seriousness about the topic. Today, what happens is a lot of doctors tell the tell people that you should quit, but they don't tell him how serious it is or how important it is. And other thing they don't tell is how to quit. But they tell them it is important, it is very uh, serious, but then how to quit again is very important, which we don't tell the patient. Third is the assess. Once you have uh, asked about a tobacco habit, once you have advised him to quit, then you should assess he, what is the confidence level or what is the willingness to quit. So this understanding the confidence and willingness again is important. So because uh, if he is willing to quit, but not confident to quit, then your strategy will change. If he is not willing to quit and uh, not confident, then you have a different strategy. So understanding this particular confidence, because there are a lot of people, 7 out of 10 people want to quit, but they are not confident to quit. They have tried on their own, but they are not uh, successful in their attempts. So if the person is, if this such kind of a person, the strategy would be different and the person who has, who is not willing to quit, he is still in the pre-contemplation stage, your strategy would be different. So assessing the person's uh, mindset is very important. 
once you have assisted matlab uh, once you assess the uh, confidence level and the willingness then immediately come to the assist whether person is willing to quit directly assist the person about different uh, strategies about quitting and then there is something called as uh, star star strategy which is nothing but set a quit date t is tell the family members a is anticipate challenges and r is remove all the tobacco products this is just a small strategy i am telling you when a person who comes to you you ask the person you advise him to quit you assess him that he is willing to quit and confident enough to quit then give him straight away this strategy called as star strategy which is nothing but set a quit date tell your family members uh, anticipate challenges and uh, remove all the tobacco products the first s is nothing but uh, set a quit date setting a quit date is very important but in india in my personal practice i feel the day what you are seeing the patient that should be the quit date because we cannot give him uh, a quit date which is like 8 to 10 days and the quit date should never be beyond 8 days because there high chances that they won't stick to it and uh, the more the quit date is uh, the same quit date there are high chances that he would listen to you and you can do a regular follow up with him uh next is uh, tell your family members telling your family members and friends is important because uh, what will happen is one of the withdrawal symptoms of uh, tobacco after top stopping tobacco completely is the patient might get irritable agitated and angry and all so this family members should bear with it and support him in this in this process and other uh, other reason is if the friends should not smoke in front of him so that he is not again uh, you know uh, triggered to smoke after looking to them so telling the fam- friend and family members is very important then comes your uh, anticipate challenges anticipate challenges is like you should ask the person that if you don't get this particular tobacco product in uh, in past if how have you faced uh, what are the difficulties you have faced so they will tell you whenever i don't get to smoke i get a headache or when i don't get to smoke i get constipated so you will prepare themselves with uh, them with all these problems if you uh, get headache you have this medicine if you get uh, constipation you have this medicine so basically we are anticipating the challenges what he might face so that he might so that he doesn't go back to that particular tobacco product after quitting because most of the tobacco relapse happens because of the severe withdrawal symptoms and uh, the last is like uh, remove all the tobacco products so we don't want any triggers uh, present so you have to remove all the tobacco products from the person so that uh, they won't uh, trigger him to Uh, have it again apart from this there could be some so simple strategies like uh, four d uh, strategies like when the urge comes to have a tobacco product or smoke this urge lasts uh, or is strong for the first 3 minutes and within 20 minutes it disappears so the first 3 minutes the person is able to control himself by doing this four d approach that is bring water deep breathing delay technique and distract in some work a deep Uh, drink water is you have a sip water uh, sip by sip whole attention is on drinking water and the mind is diverted second is deep breathing deep breathing is very important lot of uh, studies have shown that when the person is in stress also you can just concentrate on your breathing to deep breathing automatically your mind is diverted and there are lot of good effects in the body third is delay technique you should uh, convince yourself that i would smoke but after some time i will have tobacco product but after some time keep on delaying it this is something called as delayed gratification keep on delaying it as much as possible and fourth is do something else or distracting something else so uh, keeping your mind engaged in something else will help you to overcome this particular habit so these are certain simple strategies which you can do the person like 4d strategies so there are set of people uh, in one you saw in your the assess phase who are not willing to quit or not confident to quit there are different strategy for them which is called as the five r strategy so for this set of patient who are into pre contemplation stage or who are not confident even uh, enough to quit you can uh, run them through this five r strategy which is relevance about quitting risks about quitting rewards of quitting uh, what are the road blocks this is something similar to the anticipate challenges and repeat uh, the entire thing and then get uh, them back to the preparation or the action stage you might feel these are very simple things and they are simple thing uh what you can say uh, steps but once you do it uh, religiously once you implement each and each, every uh, this particular step as i said the success rate will definitely increase after this particular uh, assist stage something comes at arrange so this arrange stage is again very important because we don't want to leave the patient just by giving one particular counseling or one particular uh, meeting 
the regular follow up is the key uh, which i have found in my personal practice to help the person to quit because as the research says there are uh, on an average a person takes 2 to 12 attempts to quit so this 2 to 12 attempts to quit it takes so you have to be very regular in your follow up he might not quit in the first attempt he not might quit in the second attempt but if you are doing a regular follow up it gives you an opportunity to understand what was the reason to uh, relapse so we can again guide him and accordingly we can help him to quit so your uh, step doesn't end by just giving the first counseling session or the first uh, meeting you have to do a regular follow up with the person that is the main uh, key to help him to quit completely so it's ask advise assess assist and arrange as i said it may sound simple but it is very effective so what are the withdrawal symptoms these are the documented withdrawal symptoms like increased uh, irritability depressed mood increased anxiety so as you see most of these symptoms are or uh, all of these symptoms are mental symptoms these are mind related symptoms so and another thing is it won't last for more than 4 weeks so the initially the follow up should be very frequently then you can have a follow up in like once a 15 days or once a, a month but initially the follow up should be very frequently because the withdrawal symptoms occurring are very frequently first four weeks they are very strong so that is the reason you should have frequent withdrawals in the initial stage and if you see the only symptom which is there uh, which lasts for more than 10 weeks is the increased appetite now this tobacco has the inherent capacity to kill your appetite it is a proven fact lot of uh, actresses smoke just to uh, stay slim so what happens is this tobacco goes into your body uh, releases pseudo glucose in your body and the body feels that it is uh, not hungry you must see lot of heavy workers uh, take tea and tobacco and keep on doing work so basically this is a wrong way and because of this your appetite will go down you won't eat and if you don't eat your immunity will go down and if your immunity goes down in india the most common disease is uh, tuberculosis we have done uh, studies in uh, tb units where 90% of uh, tb patients were tobacco consumers and in today's covid scenario it has again become more important to maintain our immunity and with consumption of tobacco and smoking it would be very difficult for the people who are smoking to maintain this immunity so uh, tobacco has inherent capacity to uh, in, uh, decrease your appetite and that is the reason a diabetic patient and tobacco consumption again is a very bad combination they would never be able to uh, control uh, your sugar if the person is continuing to consume tobacco along with diabetic treatment so now i'll just explain something about the treatment part actually nrt is doesn't fall under any pathy like allopathy or any pathy it is just a replacement therapy what you uh, just saw in the physical addiction what happens is the person smokes a uh, lot of chemicals go in their body the main uh, chemical which is uh, addictive is the nicotine and this nicotine reaches the brain there are receptors in the brain which demand for nicotine now the point to understand over here is these receptors in the brain are not concerned from where this nicotine is coming from where this nicotine is coming means from which product this nicotine is coming it happens a lot of time that when person when a doctor tells the patient that you are having a high blood pressure you should stop smoking there are chances that a person will go out and stop smoking but he will uh, shift to another tobacco product that is the reason why when gutka was banned in maharashtra people stopped gutka because the price was very high because it was smuggled and uh, they were selling in black but people shifted to other tobacco product which they could afford to so this shift happens because your brain is not concerned from where this nicotine is coming they just want this nicotine same, same th uh, theory was used in this nicotine replacement therapy where what they have done is uh, when you are smoking you so many chemicals are you are exposed to but the brain wants nicotine so they have prepared a nicotine chewing gum or nicotine patch so when the brain demands for nicotine you take a nicotine chewing gum you put a nicotine patch the nicotine releases the brain the receptors will get the nicotine and the, the urge will subside so at least you are same with other harmful chemicals and you are getting this nicotine but this is just a tool one of the tool for treatment which helps you to overcome the withdrawal symptoms because withdrawal symptoms are the main reason why these people get into relapse if the brain is getting nicotine it will not show the major withdrawal symptoms 
and person can stay away from that uh, cigarette or tobacco product what, what advantage of the nicotine replacement therapy is a person who has been smoking like 10 to 20 cigarettes every day if he takes this nicotine replacement therapy and he is able to uh, stay away from that cigarette for a day or a two he might feel very confident ki are i can stay without smoking which previously he had never thought of but again this has to be taken under proper guidance because the nicotine dose is very important second thing that the proper method is important and most important thing uh, the therapy nicotine replacement therapy should also be combined with counseling there is no treatment in tobacco addiction without counseling 80% is counseling if you saw the 5a model it is majority focus was on counseling so this nicotine uh, replacement therapy should be combined with counseling because main reason again as a lot of mental uh, complaints and mental withdrawals and other thing is that dose should be tapered dose should be tapered means the if we start with uh, like 4 mg then 2 mg and then uh, absolutely no uh, nicotine because tomorrow if he doesn't get that chewing gum or a patch there are high chances that he may go and back to smoking so we have to slowly slowly do a regular follow up and slowly taper the nicotine and get him off the nicotine also and not just shift the patient from a tobacco product to a nicotine so it is a something uh, it is one of the tools for treatment and again it has to be given under proper guidance you can support the person with nicotine replacement therapy and help the patient to get out of it again there are certain contra indications like the heart ailments and uh, uh, hypertension uh, we cannot uh, give him nicotine replacement therapy but what i am trying to tell you is to understand the logic behind this particular nicotine replacement therapy it is replacing the nicotine from the smoking product or a tobacco product into a crude form of nicotine because your brain wants nicotine and it is not concerned from where this nicotine is coming and as i said uh, when a person is smoking it takes like 10 to 12 seconds for the nicotine to reach the brain if the person is chewing tobacco it takes more than half an hour for the nicotine to reach the brain but there are no nicotine product which can give you same amount of nicotine which uh, uh, as you, what you get with smoking it is almost more or less half of what you goes to the brain so again counseling becomes very important because this uh, nicotine replacement therapy would support him up to a certain level and not completely as uh, the tobacco product itself there are uh, different types of tobacco products i won't go into details of it but just to tell you about a nicotine chewing gum they are available into uh, uh, 2 mg and 4 mg there are nicotine patches which are available into 21 mg 14 and uh, 7 mg it is like for more than 20 cigarettes if the person is smoking then you have to start with 21 mg patch for a month then a, a 14 mg patch for a month then 7 mg patch for a month as i said you have to taper the nicotine dose and support it by counseling Along with this, if it is a chewing gum, you have to start with the four milligram chewing gum. If it is more than twenty, uh, like twenty cigarettes or a heavy uh, tobacco chewer, and uh, slowly reduce it to two milligram. There are other nicotine replacement products like sprays and uh, inhalers, but in India currently they are not available. Okay, so yeah these are certain behavioral uh, strategies i think i can submit this presentation i did not get uh, into details of it this is more of a theoretical thing but uh, what point uh, i am trying to make here is the backward addiction uh, is a very simple field it is not a rocket science at all little bit of de uh, dedication uh, and little bit of spending little extra time with the patient and regular follow up and not getting disheartened uh, even if you don't get immediate results like in the first follow up if the patient is not quitting you have to still understand what were the reasons behind it and still counsel the patient with the same enthusiasm because as i said there are research studies which says ki a patient might take 2 to 12 attempts on an average people take 2 to 12 attempts to quit somewhere you should not let your confidence go down and uh, keep uh, understand what what were the reasons why the patient was not able to do it and again start with a new uh, enthusiasm and again help the patient to quit and as i said uh, there is something called as obstacle to cure and the tobacco habit is one of the major obstacles to cure it is one of the most preventable cause of death like people say ki uh, people uh, who don't consume tobacco they also suffer with cancers 
but what is happening today is we have been exposed to so much stress we what we eat has lot of chemicals lot of pollution we are exposed to and in spite of that if you are having tobacco product means you are increasing the risk like if there are two people who are driving uh, one is drinking and driving and one is driving without drinking obviously there are chances that both might meet with an accident but person who is drinking alcohol and driving you has he has increased the risk of accident by you know drinking similarly we have been exposed to lot of uh, stress and lot of chemicals in, uh, in our lives today but by consuming tobacco products we are actually increasing the risk of getting uh, different diseases why i am telling you all these points because this uh, are the questions which patients raise uh, when you counsel them or when you ask them about this particular tobacco habits i think uh, we can open up for a question answer session because uh, okay, if okay. they have queries i would like to answer that more okay okay dr vinodini you can take up this uh, questions yes sir so this is a query from a doctor it said sure. that e cigarettes don't produce tar is it true sir and could you explain how e cigarettes are less harmful than regular filter cigarettes uh as i said uh, first of all e cigarette uh, it's like, like a pen the different forms of it but most of all like whether there is a liquid available over here it's in the, the nicotine or the liquid and uh, there the batteries over here and you get this smoke from because of the batteries but try to understand this is not an electronic cigarette you have to actually smoke it so it is a drug dispensing device second thing uh it is nicotine in a liquid form so definitely it is addictive and it is uh, smoke is released so you are exposed to the smoke also and the thing which you are inhaling again uh, it is not it may not be as uh, uh, what you can say harmful as tar directly but still who has not at all uh, approved any of the e cigarettes because still there are a lot of hazardous chemicals which you are exposed to so make it very clear that e cigarettes are actually promoted or introduced as a harm reduction technique uh, by uh, this particular lobby of tobacco big tobacco lobby but it is not at all uh, a harm reduction technique and it is basically getting the young children who are not into even in smoking habits but they are ordering this uh, e cigarette jewels and all in us it is a big problem and they are actually introduced to this tobacco uh, world with this e cigarettes and eventually when the nicotine demand goes on increasing they graduate from a e cigarette to a cigarette so try to understand e cigarette is not at all a solution it is uh, even if it is may or may not have that quantity of tar but still it is exposed to a lot of uh, harmful chemicals in your body okay sir so this is a query from dr manish so could you please explain the role of tobacco in causing shortness of breath uh it is uh, what happens is most of these copds your chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is because of uh, smoking because it causes constriction of your airways and uh, the tobacco has a lot of irritants which uh, triggers this particular thing so definitely 90% what you can say more or more copds the tobacco uh, smoking is uh, the main uh, culprit and it will cause uh, constriction of your airways which will lead to the uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases so definitely there is a strong correlation okay sir sir this is a query from dr anisha what can mm -hmm. be given to solve uh, like irritability problems and the constipation problems in uh, smokers see that is what i was saying see there is uh, this tobacco addiction is not uh, limited to any pathy and my today's session was not uh for any pathy it is just the basics of tobacco now if you are having a person who says he uh what he is having withdrawal of uh, stomach ache or a constipation you can definitely give good homeopathic remedies uh, based on his constitution and you can help him quit in fact i feel if he is not having any withdrawal symptoms you can give him placebo and you can tell him that this is what is going to overcome your habit and that will also work wonders because in tobacco what the person needs is your uh, basically your support your counseling that is a major role and even if you give a placebo it will help uh, 90 matlab i have seen so many patients only 10 to 20% people need nicotine replacement therapy also in spite if they are physically addicted i don't start with nicotine replacement immediately only for that small number of patients who have severe uh, withdrawal or severe uh, craving they might require to be supported by nrds but there are wonderful homeopathic remedies which you can use symptomatically for this kind of uh, patients Okay, sir. So this is a query from Dr. Raj. 
as how to manage oral submucosal submucosal fibrosis after tobacco chewing. Oh, I for, uh, forgot to mention this point. This is a very important point. Uh, tobacco uh, addiction or mostly the smokeless tobacco causes this particular four fingers go in your mouth before a tobacco chewer. There's something happens like some mucous fibrosis. Your uh, thickening becomes becomes more thick. So not even two fingers go into it. I have seen people eating with spoon. That level uh, the uh, submucous fibrosis happen. Uh, this is more of a structural change, so there is much we can do with only with medicines. But yeah, there is something like the exercises which can be done, or there are retractors available which keep on. We have to place it and increase the it slowly, slowly, so it might open. But again, this is something very serious, and we should tell the patient that this is a precancerous condition because if they don't stop at this particular stage and they continue tobacco in spite of having this submucous fibrosis, there are 99% chances that that this will lead to cancer. So you should make it very clear with patients that you're, this is a precancerous condition. You are already in the precancerous stage, and you will it will lead to cancer. There are other conditions like uh, leukoplakia, white spots, uh, erythroplakia, red spots, ulcers, which uh, are indications like a precancerous condition. These are very important to uh, have in your uh, daily uh, clinical examination because you can show it to them. Once the person sees that they are not having able to open their mouth, they are having these red spots, ulcers. White spots whitening, then they become more cautious. Here I am in a precancerous condition, so that is a big uh, motivation for them to quit. Okay, sir. So this is a query from Doctor Manoj. Uh, why and how passive smoking is dangerous? Uh, again, a very important point. Uh, this I actually explain all these points in more of awareness thing, but uh, like passive smoking, uh, person you are exposed to smoking is not actually into smoking. But what happens is. Uh, I just explained to you that more than 10 to 12 lakh people die every year in India. Now the research also says if five to six percent of this particular number die because of passive smoking, uh, so passive smoking is equally dangerous. I mean, it's a huge cause of death. Again, I'm saying death. So passive smoking again, you are uh, exposed to that particular chemicals and it is affecting your body. Secondly, there is something called as third hand smoking, which majority of people are not aware about. Third hand Smoking is what uh, if you go to a room where no one is there, but you might feel oh, uh, someone must have smoke here. I'm feeling smoke. Uh, I can inhale smoke over here. Go into a lift or a lobby or a passage where you feel someone must have smoked over here. Definitely, someone has smoked over there. That is the reason the particles still remain there on the curtains on the sofas. And this for some time, and even this third and smoking has found to be uh, hazardous and has uh, found to produce. Lot of ailments. There are research studies which were available uh, for in uh, respiratory ailments in small children. The parents were uh, asked about a smoking habit. They said, Yes, we smoke, but we smoke when the children are not there. But even then, this smoking was affecting the children over there, and there's a huge research going on. So, this third hand smoking is equally dangerous. You should also explain the consequences of second hand and third hand smoking to the person who is smoking. Okay, sir. So, there is one more question from Dr. Manoj. Uh, how can we decide nicotine gum dose? As in severe case, you said 4 mg, but in mild and moderate uh, cases, what is the dose, sir? See, there is nothing like mild and moderate. Uh, severe in the sense, uh, as I said, uh, this nicotine replacement therapy uh, is like more than 20 cigarettes. You should start with 4 mg and less than 20, you should start with uh, 2 mg. These are the two uh, chewing gum doses available in India. Uh, uh, and the problem is uh, in India, it's not only about the smokers, right? it is also about dual tobacco chewers. They smoke also, they chew tobacco also, or there are a lot of chewing tobacco products. So, we are not, uh, this research is not done exactly how much uh, should be given. But just with your uh, conscious mind, you should understand the uh, dependence. If you feel the person is uh, severely, uh, like with a fiber strong scale, if you understand he is highly dependent, you can start with 4 mg. And slowly, slowly, then you can taper down to 2 mg and as I said, uh, with uh, stop it completely. So there you have to use a little bit of your recommend while deciding the dose. But just a simple formula, if you have high consumption or high dependence, start with a higher dose. If you feel the, depend, uh, the consumption is not that much more, you start with a low dose just to support it. Okay, sir. Sir, this is a query from Dr. Kinjal, ma'am. A patient aged 85 plus has tobacco addiction from the age of 16, so almost 17 years. How to manage these patients? 84 years age, right? Yes, 85 plus, sir, currently. 85 plus. Yeah, yeah. so uh, see, the strategy is still going to be the same. You cannot tell them that uh, tobacco is going to... 
but the thing is if, as i said your strategy should change change according to the patient now for this particular patient he's he, he's been using tobacco for all his years and because he has survived for 85 plus is definitely uh, at least that much healthy but the thing is uh, if you see still there are high chances that he may get into cancer because uh, tobacco may cause him cancers but then the lifestyle the quality of life see everyone is going to die nobody is going to stay because he is not having tobacco i cannot say they will not die at any time but the uh, quality of life which is going to be affected is going to be affected in a, in a big way today the hospital expenses even a small oral cancer cost you lakhs i have seen people struggling to pay the fees they have, the whole family has to suffer because of that so all these other aspects become very important only the tobacco affects your health but it also affects you economically it also affects you socially no person would like their children to have this tobacco habit so no person matlab this is not just a affects your health it also affects your family in a big way we should explain the other aspects to this particular person and uh, the quality of life which is going to be hampered no person would like to uh, stay with a disfigured face and difficulty in eating and swallowing and all those things so all those things also should be very clear in a very subtle way you cannot just scare him like that but in a nice way you have to explain this thing to the patient even if he's 85 plus i still won't allow him to continue okay sir so this is a query from dr vibha how many patients get 100 percentage results Oh, see, I I cannot claim that hundred uh, percent results are possible because it's an addiction. It's a human nature thing. But in the in as such, in generally in addiction field, I'm talking about all addictions. Two to three percent success is considered to be something very great. In internationally, tobacco addiction twenty percent is something great, and my success was like between fifty percent to sixty percent percent. The success rate, of course, was more because we were having a very hospital practice where people are staying in the hospital. So, as such, hospital you are not allowed to smoke or chew tobacco. But uh, even after going, that is the best time you should tell the person to uh, stop because whatever withdrawals, if he's there for two three days, you can take care of them. And once once he starts with it, he is much motivated because when a person is in the, that particular vulnerable state where he thinks only about one thing that is getting better. Similarly, when a patient comes to a clinic with some ailment, the main thing what is in front of him that he wants to feel better. So he will do all the things. If you tell him to do this particular exercise, he will do it. This particular physiotherapy, he will do it. This particular diet, he will follow it. You should add this thing to also of tobacco to in that particular uh, setting only. You should tell him to quit tobacco. He will. There are high chances that he will listen to you rather than telling someone on the road who is smoking or chewing tobacco and go ahead and telling him. Of course, the results should be different, and the person who has come to you in the clinic or the hospital setup, the results should be definitely different. And as I said, if you get the proper regular follow-up, proper rapport building with the patient, understanding his problems and difficulties, the results are definitely going to be much more. Okay, sir. So this is a query from Dr. Sanjodi. Please tell about de-erection centers and how to know about the nearby centers. Uh, see, unfortunately, there are a lot of de-addiction centers which might be uh, around your place, but none of the tobacco, none of the uh, de-addiction centers cater to tobacco addiction. Unfortunately, tobacco is considered to be a secondary addiction. Uh, in fact, uh, I have actually been to de-addiction centers where all the severe alcohol and other drug uh, addict patients were admitted. They have been provided with cigarettes. They have been given cigarettes. You okay? You come out of alcohol, you take the cigarette, but stop alcohol. so this is the state of in today's uh, scenario of de addiction centers unfortunately but the best part of tobacco de addiction is it doesn't require a rehab or a de addiction center the all the withdrawals can be taken care at a day care center you just saw the uh, proper research what are the withdrawal symptoms most of them are uh, all psychological and or everything can be taken care at day care basis uh, research says ki none of the withdrawal symptoms are life threatening and in my personal experience no one has died because of quitting tobacco whatever happens is happens good to the body rather than happening something severe to the body so you have to give this confidence to the patient uh, make him understand take care of his small whatever withdrawal he face for the first four weeks as i said the withdrawals are very strong so the first four weeks we can control him with the proper uh, management you can definitely uh, help him to quit so i don't think a rehab or a de addiction center is required okay sir So this is a query from Dr. Olga. Why some people are affected and others not? Oh, this is another wonderful question. This would this would people would ask you this like, 
people get cancer in spite of not having tobacco and people with tobacco also don't get cancer so the thing is the little bit you have to explain them uh, in a very nice way he uh, of course in a scientific way when a person is born he is born uh, with the genes what he get from his parents i mean every lay person is aware of this we can tell them that when you go to a uh, doctor for diabetes they will ask you ki aapke family mein uh, what, what was the if you have any family history of diabetes why because these are certain genetically uh, transferred uh, diseases and all so this quality of uh, genes i mean we we'll, uh, we look like our parents are height or eyes color or a color looks we look like our parents because these genes of the genes what we get from our parents similarly these genes also so decide what diseases we will get in future that is the reason even a 3 year old uh, child can suffer from cancer he has never even seen tobacco but still he is having cancer because the quality of genes what he is getting from his parents but we are we, we are not allowed to select good quality genes we get the genes which god gives us so the person gets the genes good quality bad quality whatever from the parents and he has to be with it but tobacco is something which is in our hands nobody is going to force tobacco in our mouth and force us to have a cigarette so these things are which are not in our hand we cannot do that but we have to uh, do things which are in our hands so we can actually prevent us from consuming tobacco so uh, the quality of genes is one factor which decides you in spite of having tobacco you might get cancer in a 5 years 10 years or 15 years or you might not get also so that totally depends on quality of genes which you are not totally aware of secondly uh, th- i mean even in uh, uh, ayurveda we have this vat pitt kapha competition uh, this constitution so depending upon some genetic constitution we are more prone to some diseases some people are less prone to some diseases so it is totally uh, depends upon the quality of genes and what constitutions you have com- you have uh, you, the person has okay sir So this is a query from Dr. Sandhya. So please tell me some remedies in which you get results. <laughs> See, as I said, it is very uh, person specific and depends upon the withdrawal. So it is nothing like the backum or anything you should give to every patient. You, you should, you should, again, like a person who comes to like with a fever, you don't give him same uh, medicine. Depends upon the uh, whatever uh, specific symptoms and his history, you have to decide the medicine. so don't uh, go into generalized medicine you take proper history and as per the uh, case you prescribe your medicines okay sir so this is a query from dr seema anything if given taste of cigarettes change to bad taste or like that yeah there are certain uh, food like uh, milk if you have a cigarette and after that you smoke the taste would be very bad uh, so there are certain foods which you can give to the person and ask him to take so that uh, he gets that bad taste in mouth Okay, sir. Okay, uh, Doctor Vinodini, just a moment. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I would like to welcome Doctor Kinjal Shah uh, to uh, for uh, telling some uh, for for the review of our session. Actually, uh, through Doctor Kinjal only we uh, got Doctor Rohan. Yes, yes. Actually, we are studied in same college. In yeah, yeah. Same hotel, Mumbai. It's a proud yeah. moment for me. <laughs> Kinjal, yeah. thank you dr deepu first of all that uh, we could uh, arrange and we yes, could yes, manage somehow from the british schedule dr rohan could catch him and get him on this platform over here and i i My am pleasure. i'm very much sure that everyone in this platform today all the audience must have really benefited a lot of lot of really rare information which we never get in our medical schools at all so thank you so much dr rohan and thank you dr deepu for coordinating and coming on this platform together thank you man uh, uh, uh doctor the deep you can give my number so that uh, if you have any yeah yeah definitely sir sure. definitely uh, doctor rekha are you there ma'am doctor rekha ma'am are you there uh yeah i'm here uh, can, uh doctor rekha can you comment on the session ma'am? uh yeah actually this is a very this topic is very uh, Uh, near to my heart like uh, uh, being a mental health professional i always uh, see the opportunity in treating uh, patients with addiction it's a great uh, uh, area of uh, expertise uh, one can have and it's i'm very glad uh, 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 dr rohan is uh, doing such a great work in this field and yes, i think you. Uh, you should have a training uh, uh, modules as well to training sure. uh, generation 
so that they can confidently take up uh, such a thing in large scale. Yeah, scales. today the time and everything was there, but we normally have yeah. two day trainings. Actually, I tried to sum it up, uh, and because it was uh, for yeah. the doctors, I could take it uh, fast. But normally, yeah, we okay. take it very slowly with a lot of case studies and all. But uh, yeah, surely this was just an introduction. We can uh, think of uh, working in that direction. Right. Yeah, but yeah. I hope this was beneficial uh, to you. Yeah, yeah, and I will get back to you at some point of time, maybe in sure, future. Sure. Uh, we Absolutely. have some plans for uh, de addiction uh, uh, in all uh, aspects, uh, so that Definitely. we can train young homeopaths. Definitely. Yeah, such a great thing. Uh, wonderful. My My yeah, pleasure. thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I request Dr. Vinodini uh, to give an official vote of thanks to Dr. Rohan for for an enlightening session on sabak addiction. Yes, sir. So thank you so much for the enlightening session, sir. You have given us a very good insight about the forms of tobacco available, which we have not known till now, and the stages of addiction and how to manage the stages of addiction. Thank you so much, sir. We are looking forward for more sessions from you, sir. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Such my an pleasure. enlightening session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Deepu. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank Kinjal. you, Dr. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Be safe.